Thank you for tuning in to another edition of Pre-Market Pulse Scan. Today is Take Back Friday, April the 7th, 2017. The time is now 8.41 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we just had those uh, initial jobless claims come out at 8.30. And it was whack. Only 89,000 jobs created. And that's kind of pitiful. Therefore, you see here the Dow is now down 71 points. It had uh, been down a lot more after that report of the U.S. firing missiles uh, in Syria. The Dow dropped to 20,462, all right, which is below the 20,500 support. We're back above the 20,500 support. We're at 20,535. NASDAQ 100 is down 16 at 5406 and a half. S&P is down 7 and 3 quarters at 2346 and the Nikkei is down 90 at 18705. Crude oil broke that 52 uh, dollar threshold, ran up to 5285, I'm sorry, 5295 and now we're at 5192 and a half, so we've dropped a buck. Uh right now the euro is off eight pips at 106.74. It broke the 107 psychological support. Uh, the pound is down 36 pips at 124.62. The Aussie is off two, make that 20 pips at 75.11. And gold bursted in a big way to the upside, up over $17.20. We're at 1270 and a half after hitting 1273.30. And silver exploded higher, up almost 19 cents at $18.43. And natural gas is at 330. And right now it's only off three ticks. So you can see commodities are pretty strong this morning. So where does this leave us? Well, I have up here the Russell chart, and you can see the Russell's already in a full-blown correction and is in danger of turning into a full-blown bear market, and it's all happening under the Kumo cloud on the daily chart. Daily chart below the Kumo cloud. Trend lines below the Kumo cloud. Price action below the Kumo cloud. Not a good sign. Let's take a look at the Nikkei to see if we can find further clues of a larger market correction or something else. Well, it looks like further market correction because look right here. What do you got? What do you see? You see that the Nikkei is already further extended to the downside, trend lines below your Kumo cloud, price action below your Kumo cloud, and we are crossing on the trend lines. Not good. This shows that the market top is well in, and we're now in corrective territory, which is now turned bearish. This is the beginning, or the top, I should say, of the new bear market. All right, this is a correction on the daily chart. We need to pay attention to this because on the weekly chart, and this is the Nikkei, remember what I, I, I told you guys the other day, that the Russell and the Nikkei tend to lead the world markets at times. And we're talking about the world stock indexes. Well, here is the weekly. And I blew it up so you can see it. It was like in a range. And then we broke support. Here's the Kumo cloud down here. Don't have too much further to go. Switch this over to the Russell. And it looks the exact same thing. The Russell and the Nikkei are moving together. Some would argue, well, the Nikkei is not a U.S. thing. Yeah, but the Russell is. All right, the Russell is. Here's the range. Here's how we broke down through support. Tried to come back, and now it's it's topping out again. Here's the Kumo cloud. The only thing that you have in your favor 
is that when you get down to here, you got the ramp coming up, which could help save the day and get a bounce. If not, we cut through it like a hot knife through butter. This is where we are. We're, we're showing weakness. All right. You're, lo you're in danger of losing momentum today on the weekly chart. That spells doom for the bullish argument going into next week. Looking at gold, here we have a very nice move, okay? The market was able to push higher in a big way. I did tell you about 12.61 half, 12.61, 20, somewhere around there, is what we needed to close on the weekly chart in order to put an end to the downside. Well, right now, the market has everything going in its favor to do that being above 1270 and this opens the door to a big push to get a close above 1300 next week so this is looking really really doable now this is looking great a close above 1300 next week gets us out of the kumo cloud and we could be off and running folks this could be looking good you know where we're headed right show of hands who knows where we're headed looking at this chart can you see the chart yes you can do y'all remember the the uh, learning academy what we talked about pointers everybody see the point all right you got it now where are we headed here's the first here it is the first one right here all right we got two of them we got one back here on september the 5th of 2016 all right 1357.60 and the second one is on November the 7th, 2016, at uh, 1338.30. All right? So that's where we're going. The first resistance is at 1338.30. Second resistance is at 1357.20. That's where we're going, folks. Fasten your seatbelts because we got mad bucks ahead of us to go. It's not going to necessarily do it in a straight line, but this is where we're going. Pointers, people. I told you about the pointers. You won't learn that in no textbook, no trading book, nowhere. I don't care how old the book is. You will not learn that in a book. That is exclusive, exclusive Black Ops trading material. It's just how it is, folks. That's why you're here. All right, so. Now let's look at what we're going to do for the day. Well, we've already looked in pre-market, and we did look at some other things in pre-market, like the JNUG and the GDXJ, which are looking nice. They're, they're getting that lift. I did point out to you before, too, the complexity of your, um, your miners. Um, and it, they are complex because of the various reasons that they are a stock, but they're a stock that really deals in a... Uh, precious metal, which also happens to be a commodity, which also happens to be a currency. So all those currency fluctuations come into play, and it makes it makes them more complicated, but it makes them better things to trade too. Though uh, I don't know if you all are aware of it or not, but I did add um, I added the the uh, the, the new three X oils, the uh, ticker O I L and O-I-L-U. Um, I'm hoping that they can make it to the chart. Um, you know, it's a data issue. If there's not enough data, then it, it could make it difficult to, to make it onto there. So hopefully they will. Um, I also added the Sprott uh, asset classes for you. All right. And uh, you may want to take advantage of those as well. Um, so I have the Sprott, um, I have all the Sprots. I added the Sprott, uh, Palladium Platinum, uh, ticker. I also added the, um, the, uh, the Sprott Gold Miners. So that's on there too. All right. So for those of you that, uh, that want to do that, you can. You got the Sprott Junior Miners, the Sprott Gold Miners, the Sprott Physical Gold, the Sprott Physical Platinum and the Sprott Physical Silver. Remember what the Sprott Physical 
ETFs, they can be exchanged for physical. All right. So you had that in your corner. They can be exchanged for physical. All right. For those of you who do not know that, you got to read the prospectus and, uh, you know, do what you do. Now, normally, as a result of that, the theirs don't tend to move as much as the SLV and GLD per se, but they do move. Okay, so for those of you who may like a little bit slower action, that may be an option for you. Uh, nevertheless, it's there uh, for your purposes, so do what you need to do. I added them, like I said, for those of you who would like to participate in something like that. All right, let's look at uh, what we got going on on the rally alerts real quick. Uh, let's see, anything of note? Let's see, Lean Hog Futures. Uh, Coffee has a rally alert, ticker symbol J-O. Uh, let's see, CCJ, for those of you who follow that one. DGLD has a rally alert. I don't see that playing out today unless the banks come in and really beat this thing down. Uh, I just don't see it. Nevertheless, um, I'm, I got a ticket working. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, readjust my entry to reflect today's, um, today's sheet if need be. Uh, XIV has a rally alert. I don't see that playing out. But it, then again, you never know. It is Take Back Friday, so anything's possible. Uh, let's see what else we got. FAS, the financial sector has it. JNUG has a rally alert that's already playing out. Some uh, Someone asked me about semiconductors uh, yesterday in yesterday's webinar. Well, here's your SOX L right here. It has a rally alert on it. Uh, I know what you're thinking. You're looking at the uh, trigger price, and you're looking at where we closed yesterday, and you're like, no way in four worlds. But uh, you never know. So watch it and see if it does move up because it is possible you could get a nice rally move that could set up for a breakout move for Monday. So watch it for today. And it's a good discipline if this is your if this is your symbol, this is your ticker, this is your market. Like we said yesterday, it's a good discipline to go ahead and put your tickets in regardless. All right. If you want to get lucky in trading. You need good trade execution, discipline, because you never know. I can't tell you how many times I got I got mad lucky because I had a ticket working and left it and just forgot about it. I just went in every day, even though the market was far removed from my entry price. I went in every day, adjusted it based on the, the new readings for the sheet. And one day, uh, uh, I got lucky. It happened to me once in crude oil. Uh, I will never forget that. I caught a big short in crude oil once because I had a ticket working, forgot about it, boom. I woke up the next morning, that, that joint was filled, and I was I was, I was tap dancing, you know? All right, let's see. We got a rally alert in dust and drip, too. So this is interesting. Uh, Gush has a rally alert, too. And uh, let's see. Uh, Nack, Nick Nack Paddywhack has a rally alert. Well, 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 you don't say. We got plenty of rally alerts today, as a matter of fact, of note. Uh, let's see. The inverse Russell. I am not surprised. Ticker symbol UWM as in Mark. I am not surprised. Uh, let's see. UVXY and SQQQ. I'm not really feeling the, um, the UVXY. Um, I'm going to stay with my XIV. The SQQQ is definitely an option. Uh, I would look at that one, and the quid. You all, you all know I've been, I've been having my tickets in that quid, so I'm gonna have to um, cancel, replace those tickets to match today's entry, which it it is a little bit lower. So I like that. And uh, for those of you who like uh, U.S. Steel, who uh, shorted it. Now, isn't it funny? I haven't got a chance to really talk about it. I didn't get a chance to really talk about this, but have you guys noticed U.S. Steel? After that initial short that we did in it, I just, you know, left it alone and forgot about it. But do you guys remember back up in here? Isn't this where we start shorting it right up here? Do y'all remember? 
And y'all remember where I said it was going to end up going down into the 30s? Well, look what we did. We went all the way down to $30.73. Who remembers me calling that when we first got in it? And everyone said, how low do you think it will go? Y'all remember that? Here it is right here. We, we shorted it back up in here, back up here near these highs. And now look at us today. <laughs> go pulse waves, right? Pulse waves are, are where it's at. All right, uh, let's see. Notable crash alerts today. Any notable crash alerts? Let's see. Uh, let's see. My XIV. Oh, it's going to make me cry. Um, still nowhere near my stop, though. So this is a good one. This is. Uh, I'm, I'm going to hold it. I'm, I'm going to hold it. Uh, let's see. The NASDAQ 100 Futures has the crash alert. Uh, let's see. What else of note? Uh, wheat futures has a crash alert for those of you watching futures, and pretty much everything in the world. Look, watch that Nasdaq 100 because it really hasn't moved too much. It's down six points. Uh, let's see, crude oil futures has one. FedEx has a crash alert. Hmm, interesting. My natural gas has one too, so. I'm going to have to watch that. Also of note is the JDST's um, crash alert. So note that support on the JDST. If you see that take get taken out, then you know you know that we're heading even, even higher in the GDXJ. So just watch that. All right, the question is, with it being Friday, should we enter new positions if the pulse wave entry is hit? Um, in light of new market situations, depending on what market we're talking about, the answer is going to be yes, to be quite honest with you. Yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm looking to do some things that just like I told you before, I'm looking to, uh, get long the quid, uh, if it triggers, I may even add the Russell in there. <clears throat> so yeah, I, I will I will look to put on new positions today. I can do that. You can do that too. You don't have to be afraid of the weekend anymore. Remember, we had a big, huge algo shift, so you don't need to be afraid anymore. It's all good. Just understand that it is Take Back Friday for some securities. So anything that's been trending, like really hard, like up every day. Remember, the rule is every day up. So let's go back and look at something. For instance, I, this is General Steel here. It hasn't been every day up or down in the last four days. So anything can happen with this today. You can be you can be comfortable putting a trade in. Uh, let's just do. Actually, let's do let's do gold real quick because that's going to be a good question mark. All right, here we are. All right, one, two, three. Four. So out of the last four trading days, we've had three up days and one quiet down type of day. So this one is not subject to take back Friday. All right. Uh, let me see. GDXJ. GDXJ, no. GDXJ does not have a crash alert. GDXJ, uh, let's look at the chart on your sheet here. GDXJ right now is in a bullish Kumo cloud. <coughs> Excuse me. It's in the Kumo cloud with bullish momentum. Number five is a momentum reading in the trend column. All right. So five means that the uh, the weekly trend has, is, is bullish. 18 is the monthly trend, meaning bullish. So those are your, <clears throat> excuse me, and then three is just a, a raw momentum reading. All right, so right now, GDXJ has, has the bullish momentum on the weekly, and under your positive momentum column, we are locked in with bullishness. All right, even though um, you have seen the market go down uh, for a few days prior, as of right now, it's locked in on the bull side. All right. And today's momentum reading also favors the long entry on the GDXJ. 
There you go. Yep. Way to read it. You got it. Yep, that's a good post wave one. Now, I don't see an entry, possibly. I, mean, I don't know. I mean, I can't really say that. It's not too far removed from the market. Let's see where the market is right now. Let's, let's take a look. Let's take, take a look-see. All right, right now, uh, let's see. GDXJ popped up to 37.79. Right now, it's at 37.47. So, hey, it's, it's in play. It could do it. It could definitely do it. You know what I mean? So... <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, I did mention 38 bucks before. I sure did. I'm glad you remember that. So this is, this is key. It's critical. If it triggers, it, it should run. It should definitely run to the top side. All right. So that'll do it for now. Uh, everyone have a great weekend. Uh, to all my YouTube subscribers, thank you for all your prayers and support. And the kitties are doing much better now. Uh, my daughter, as you know, was, was sick. She's way better now, back to herself. Then my son got sick, like, on Monday, and now he's he's bounced back. So everyone is, is, is healthy, which is a blessing. So remember, bulls make money, bears make money, and pigs get slaughtered. So remember to take what you can and give nothing back. Everyone have a great weekend. 52.85, I'm sorry, 52.95. And now we're at 51.92 and a half, so we've dropped a buck. Uh, right now, the euro is off eight pips at 106.74. It broke the 107 psychological support. Uh, the pound is down 36 pips at 124.62. The Aussie is off two. We're back above the 20,500 support. We're at 20,535. Nasdaq 100 is down 16 at 54.06 and a half. S&P is down seven and three quarters at twenty three forty six, and the Nikkei is down ninety at eighteen thousand seven zero five. Crude oil broke that fifty two dollar uh, threshold, ran up to fifty. Make that twenty pips at seventy five eleven, and gold bursted in a big way to the upside, up over seventeen dollars and twenty cents. We're at 1270 and a half after hitting 1273.30. And silver exploded higher, up almost 19 cents at $18.43. And Thank you for tuning in to another edition of Pre-Market Pulse Scan. Today is Take Back Friday, April the 7th, 2017. The time is now 8.41 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we just had those... Uh, Initial jobless claims come out at 8.30, and it was whack. Only 89,000 jobs created, and that's kind of pitiful. Therefore, you see here the Dow is now down 71 points. It had uh, been down a lot more after that report of the U.S. firing missiles uh, in Syria. The Dow dropped to 20,462. All right, which is below the 20,500 support. 